Today's topic is generators in Python. Okay, let's begin with what is generator. Generator is a simple way of creating an iterator. Now, if you don't know what iterator is, then you can go and watch my last episode on iterators. In this video as well, we are going to cover the iterator real quick. So let's say you are defining a remote control class, which when you say remote control next, it gives you the next TV channel. So in order to do that, you can use this yield statement here. So what I'm doing is first returning CNN, then returning ESPN. So these are the list of channels that I have on my TV. And by calling this remote control next iterator, I am basically going through these channels one by one. Now this yield statement sounds similar to return, but it's not exactly return because the difference between return and yield is that when you return, the function basically returns and it destroys all its local variables and so on. Versus here, you will see in a moment that it kind of preserves the state of last execution. So if I say ITR equal to remote control, See, normally if I had return statement here, if this was return CNN, ITR will get CNN assigned to it. But here, uh, okay, so I made a mistake. So it should be remote control next. So if I say ITR here, it, it is telling me ITR is a generator object. So it is a generator which is uh, Basically, it's creating an iterator for you. So when you have iterator, the common property uh, of iterator is you should be able to do next on it. So when you say next, you got CNN. When you do next again, you get ESPN. This way, when you call next, it returns the first yield. Then it remembers that it was here last time. So when you call next second time, it is going to return ESPN. This could be useful if you have a long list of values and you don't want to return them in one shot because if you return them in one shot, it requires a lot of memory and also you have to process those values here in this function versus with yield, you can produce your first result, which is CNN in this case, and you can just immediately return it. Then you can produce your next result, result return it. So it has a benefit of saving memory as well as uh, getting a quick processing. You can also do this. So for C in remote control next, print C. If you re recall from iterator episode, uh, you already learned there that for loop works on generators. So here, remote control next is giving you a generator and generator has an ability to be compliant with the for loop so that for loop can iterate over each of these values. Okay, uh, next thing we are going to cover is a Fibonacci sequence. We are going to produce that using a generator. Now, before we go into details, let's see what a Fibonacci sequence is real quick. A Fibonacci sequence is basically a sequence of numbers where uh, you basically keep on adding initial two numbers to get the third number. So in this case, the initial two numbers is zero, one. So add zero plus one is one, one plus one, two, one plus two, three, two plus three, five, and so on. So this is called a Fibonacci sequence. And what you want to do here is produce Fibonacci sequence using a generator. So we're going to write our generator function. Let's call it fib. And the first two numbers in Fibonacci sequence are always zero and one. So I just initialized A and B to be zero and one. So A here is zero, B is one. And I'm just going to have an infinite loop here. And on each iteration, what you do is you yield first number, okay? And then your a and b become so a becomes b so in this syntax a is now becoming b and b will become a plus b right that's what it is and then 
what you're going to do here is this is your main code so here in this main code you will say for f in fib now notice what will happen if i just keep on calling this for loop since there is an infinite loop here it will never terminate so i want to produce fibonacci sequence until certain limit so here i would say if f greater than 30 then break so i want to just see fibonacci or let's say i want to see fibonacci numbers between 0 and 50 okay so all right so let's do this and then print f all right let's quickly run this excellent so you see here i got the fibonacci sequence 0 1 1 1 1 2 or 2 and 1 is 3 2 and 3 is 5 and so on and it terminated when it the fibonacci number exceeded 50 because 31 34 and 21 is a 55 so that's why it exceeded if you want to print like number until 100 then you get this so the way this works is we can set a, a breakpoint and see uh, how this is going okay let's debug it using this thing here and initially it will come to this guy and let's see so if i do f11 to go into that okay so i'm inside this function now i will just keep on pressing this button to go to next line uh, as you see a zero base one yield so when i do yield so from yield a yield is short of like return so it came back here and when you look at the value of f it is zero good you go to next statement and again you do next or i would rather step into it so when i step into it it remembers that it executed this statement last time so then it resumed ex execution from this point so a was zero b was one so the next thing that's going to happen is a will be one and b will be one and again i'm going to return a so the value of a is now one so when you so you see f is one now okay and if you look at your console uh, one so if you do next next you'll see see zero and one got printed here uh, so i will again go inside this and a is now one and b is two it's returning a which is one so if you just do f10 it will not go inside this function if you want to go inside the function then you have to do f11 or, or use this button okay so you kind of get how this works all right okay now the generators are better compared to class based iterators because you noticed here is let me just terminate the execution here so because you notice here is that we didn't need, need to implement itr or next methods if you recall from my last video if you are writing a class based iterator then you have to write next and itr method here you don't need to do that second thing is you don't need to raise stop iteration because it will do it automatically for you if i uh, open idle once again and let me show you the same example just to kind of highlight what i what i mean by you don't need to raise stop iteration so here uh itr is remote control and next itr so you see it's stop iteration here it automatically raises it for you you didn't raise it here right so these are the benefits of generators so that's about it and thank you very much for watching this video